Okay, for this project you're going to need a size I, 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, um, some 4 ply yarn. I'm using Caron Simply Stop, it's a worsted weight acrylic, but any kind of 4 ply will work. And I'm going to be using two different colors. You're going to need a piece of fabric, just a small piece. I had this leftover from a bag that I made my niece. It's just a leftover scrap piece. You don't need a very big one. And you're going to need some thread. I'm going to be using embroidery thread because it matches the color of yarn that I'm using. But if you want to use regular thread and a regular needle, that's fine too. And then some beads for decoration if you want to do that. Okay, to start out, now this is very customizable. You can make it um, as big or small as you'd like. I started out with a chain of 26. And I already did it a little bit ago, so I'm just going to show you with a small sample. But 26 is what I did. And it's really easy. You just want to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And then go across the chain doing one single crochet in each stitch. All we're going to be doing is rows of single crochet. Really easy. Just like that. And then when you get to the end, you just chain one, turn your work, and then we start in, not this stitch right here, but this one is considered our next stitch. And we just work across the row again, doing one single crochet in each stitch. And this is what we're going to do for the majority of the, the biggest part of the bag. Back and forth of rows of single crochet. And then, this is what I got so far. Okay, I got 35 rows, but you can definitely make it a lot longer if you want. It is completely up to you. And after we got however long we want, of our rows of single crochet, I'm going to go around the entire thing with doing one single crochet in every stitch just to kind of clean up the edges a little bit. So you can start wherever you want. I'm just going to start right up here in the corner. And I started with the slip knot on my hook. So I'm just going to go into that corner stitch and pull through the slip knot on my hook. I want to go back into that same stitch and do a single crochet. And then I want to work my way down, doing one single crochet in every stitch. And some of these stitches you're not going to be able to see very well, especially the ones along the sides. You'll be able to see these up better. But so just kind of evenly space them out the best that you can. And I'm going to you want to hide your tail as you go, it's easier that way. So I'm going to continue going down with one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, I made it down to the end here with my first, the row of single crochet along the edge. And I'm just going to go ahead and put two in each corner. That way it turns the corner smoothly. So I'm going to put two in the corner stitch. And then I'm just going to continue working my way around. Doing one single crochet in each stitch. And I'm going to do that until I get around back to the beginning. One in each stitch and then two 
in each of the corners. Okay, I made it all the way around with that row single crochet and I just slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet that I made. Now I'm going to slip off here and tie. I hid these tails as I went, so. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide all the rest of my tails. Okay, now I want to get my piece. If there's a side that you like better, than the other. They both kind of look the same to me. Um, this is going to be the inside that we're going to line. So if you have a better side, face it down right now. And then you want to get your piece of fabric and you want to cut it. Lay it on here. And cut it to where there's about mm, a half inch on each side hanging over. That way you can fold it over and have a nice clean edge. So Actually, mine's just about right. Just leave a little edge all around it like that. I'm going to cut this straight here. Don't have to be perfectly, but... Okay. Okay, lay your piece out. Put your fabric on top. We're going to sew it. We're going to fold it down, the edges down like this. Now you're probably going to need some pins to hold it in place. And you just pin it. You can use some needles too, if you have needles. But you just pin it straight across. And something that I like to do, I'm not going to do it now, but when I'm lining a bag and I want a, a nice crease, it's good to iron the crease down first like that. Um, that way it makes it real flat, but I'm not going to do that right now. And then I'm going to go around the whole sides, fold it in. Getting it as straight as I can. Going not quite to the edge. You can see there's just a little bit hanging over, but not much. Well, I need some more pins. There was a safety pin. I don't do that many sides. I just usually hold down two sides at a time, like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and take that out and fold this side over too while I'm at it. And if you do iron the crease, it stays in place a lot better. But Okay, I'm just going to start with this so far. And I'll move the pins as I go. So I'm going to use this embroidery thread. But you can use regular thread works just as good. I use that a lot of times too. I just, truthfully, I just didn't have any that really matched my, the color of my bag. So that's why I'm using this. So just put a knot in your thread at the bottom, whether it be this thread or your regular thread and needle. Either one will work. I use both all the time when I line my bags. But if you're using an embroidery, you're going to need a, sh a darning needle, but you're going to need one that has a sharp point. It will go through your fabric better that way. Anyways, I just started with a knot, and I'm going to pull the knot just through the fabric part to start off not through the back of the the crocheted piece okay and I'm just gonna go through like that and then try and dye my stitches the best I can going under and back up now you can do it this way I'm doing it where I'm just going to be going in and out in a straight line but if you want you can 
whip stitch it over the sides. I do that too. Whatever way works best for you to get the the thread around it. And if you have a sewing machine, that even works better. But I don't. So not yet anyways. And I'm gonna come back through the back, go under my stitches, and then back up. This is the part that's probably the most time consuming if you don't have a sewing machine. Everybody always sends me messages on YouTube and asks me if I line my bags. And I do line um, the majority of them. I usually do that off camera though because it's so time consuming. I just don't. I have a couple of tutorials that I line the bags during it, but the reason why I do it off camera is because I don't have a sewing machine, and it is pretty time consuming. It take me a while. It takes me a while to line bags by hand. Me, anyways, because I'm kind of particular about my stitches showing through on the back, so I take my time to make sure that doesn't happen. Therefore, it does take me a little while. So yes, I do line the majority of my bags, but some of them I don't, I just... So this is how I'm going to do this all the way around. And then since I got that done, I can move that, and I'm going to work my way down this side. And I'm just trying to make the stitches line up nice and straight if I can. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going down this line. Okay, I made it up this side. What I'm going to do is just turn and go around the corner. So I'm going to make sure this is all folded here how I want it. And then I'm just going to repin this side. Just to hold it in place while I'm working with it. that and I'm going to work my way around this side and I'll take the pins out and I'll come around this side and fold it up pin it and work my way back around and I'm just going to do that all the way around until I get back to the beginning okay I made it all around mine and all I do to tie off is I just take my thread it can whether you're using regular thread or embroidery thread it doesn't matter and I just weave it in the back weave it in a, a few times so it's not going to come undone, just like I would yarn. Okay, got that part done. So it's going to go something like this. Okay. Now I want to make a pocket here, and I'm going to do that out of um, yarn, I think, if I can find some. I would just use the same color. I don't even know what I do with that. Okay. So I'm just going to start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm actually just going to do it the same way I did the whole thing. I'm just going to do single crochet rows. Okay, I want a chain long enough to go um, down the long side of it. So I'm starting with a chain of 28. 
and then I'm going to just single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then I'm going to go across doing one single crochet in each stitch just like I did when we did the big portion of it and then when I get to the end I'm just going to chain one and turn and I'm going to do it again and I'm not quite sure how many rows I'm going to do but I'll let you know here in just a second I got this done and I did 15 rows, but you can do more if you like. And I sit on the long side, but both sides are pretty much the same. So you put this piece on whatever side, opposite side you want it to roll. So I mean, I, they're really about the same to me. So if I want to, I'm going to roll it like this. So I want to leave this one open. And if you want to do one on each side, you could do that. It might even roll better if you did that. But I'm just going to do one for now. I'm going to go ahead and crochet it on. So I'm going to go around here with single crochet and then I'm going to single crochet this one. But right here on this side I need to put, I need to have two strings, longer strings, so when I roll it I'm able to tie it. I'm sorry, down here, like this. So when I roll it up I'll have two strings that I can tie it up with. So I'm just going to start with a slip knot on my hook. And then I want I want my two strings to come off either end you pick, it doesn't matter. So you want to find the center by counting your stitches across. Yours might be different than mine, but I have 26, so 13 is going to be about my center. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a little mark there. Okay, I'm going to start with the chain. And this chain is going to be however long I want my, my first little uh, string to be. You can make yours however long you want to do, but you want to make sure it's going to be able to wrap around it and tie up. So I'm just going to like do a quick little, just to judge here. Okay. I'm going to make my string a chain of 50. So I'm going to go right into this spot. This is my center that I have marked out of where my two strings need to come off of. And if 50, you feel like 50 is too long, you can make yours as long as you want. But I'm going to go into that stitch. I'm going to go ahead and move my marker and single crochet. Now I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch around. But this is going to get sewed on here. So I'm just going to go around until I get back down to here where I can single crochet this on. So I'm just going to go around. 
I hope that wasn't confusing adding that string. I'm going to add another string at the end when I get back around to the beginning. So I'm going around with one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, I'm coming around. Here's where I started and I made my first string to tie it with. Went around with one single crochet in each stitch. Now I'm back to here and I want to just go ahead and single crochet this on. So I'm just going to line up the corners there and put a little pin so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to line this up and when I get to it, right here, I'm just going to go through the piece on this piece first stitch on this piece and then the next stitch here and single crochet the next stitch on this piece the next stitch here single crochet so I'm just still doing one single crochet in every stitch I'm just going through this uh, pocket piece and the piece on my bag this time just so it stays on I'm going to move out my pin so I can go around the corner with it. I'm just going to continue along around the corner. And continue across single crocheting it on. Super easy. Now it's attached. And I'm just going to repeat that till I get to here. And if you have to stretch it a little bit, that's fine. If you made it a little too short, I made it a couple stitches too short, but it's okay to stretch it. And I'm just going to do that until I get back here to the beginning. Okay, once you got this all uh, single crocheted on, just go ahead and single crochet to the first stitch. And go ahead and go into the one, very first one that you went into to start this chain. Go into it again, like that. And then you want to make the chain, the chain, however long you did your other chain. I did 50, so I'm going to do 50 again. Okay, and then I just went ahead and just tied off, and I'll do something with these strings here in just a little bit at the end. For now, you can just leave them. Um, now you want to get either your thread and needle that you used or your embroidery thread, whichever one you used. 
Okay, then you load up your needle, which with whatever thread you're using. Now we're just gonna sew, making little um, needle slots. So uh, I put a knot in the end. So you just want to start from start, and I'm gonna make slots go through the whole bag all the way through to the other side and I'm just going to put stitches in it kind of just like I did when I was sewing on the the lining and I'm just going to go straight down try to keep it in a line if you can keep it as straight as possible find some kind of if you can, some kind of line to follow. And you can put as many of these little pocket things as you want because they don't have to be real big to hold a needle. And truthfully, you don't even have to go all the way down with it. Just maybe three quarters of the way. But you can go all the way down if you want. And then you can test it out. Oh. There's one pocket. So... It's not easy, then when you get it done, you just, I'm just going to, to tie it off, I just hide my, weave my tail in a couple times, just like I do with yarn. That's why it's important to have the same color thread that you, your main part of your bag is. And that's one of them. And I'm going to go along and I'm going to do them however many you want to do. You can use and make a big one at the end for a pair of scissors if you want. It's up to you. So I'm just gonna stick in another one here. And I'll start with that knot there and then I'm just gonna go down. And this is, oh, this is going to, what's going to make my slots. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep making some slots all the way across. And I'll meet back up with you in just a minute okay I got my pockets made you do as many pockets for as many needles that you want to have in here this is just for show I have oh I don't know over a hundred needles that I picked up over the years at auctions and stuff so this is just this is all for show I'm not even gonna really carry them in here, in here. But if you want to do all the way across, you can. This is just an example you know, of what you can do. And down here at the bottom, if you notice that your stitches are kind of loose and um, there's a chance that your needle, one of your needles might slide through the hole down here if you push too hard, you can fix that real quick. And that may not be the case for everybody's stuff, but if yours is like that, if you stitch too loose or something like that I would just take your you can use yarn too and I would just do a couple whip stitches along the bottom just to keep it shut just along the spots that you think um, your needle could come out but or you could do it all the way across I guess and that'll keep it from falling out the end just do that all the way across just all the way down. I'm not going to do that because I think my needles are going to be okay. But that's just something you can do. Okay, for these strings here. Um, 
I'm gonna put a couple beads on. I was gonna use a different color yarn on this around the edges, but I think I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Um, if you wanna put beads on, you can. It's up to you. I'm just gonna put a couple, but go ahead and just string them on the ends here. If you want to do it, you don't even have to do this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tie a little knot here in my yarn around the last bead. Oops. And if you don't want to put beads on, just, um, just weave this tail up through there and then clip it off. Okay, there's one. I'm going to go ahead and do my other one real quick. Okay, if you got your beads on, if you added beads, it's completely up to you. You didn't have to do that. But And then that's the last step. That's all there is that I'm going to do to it. If you want to add more decorations, you can, but then you just roll her up wrap it I wrap it a couple times tie her up and that's it then you got a little needle carrier that's all there is to it and I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and I hope you were able to follow along okay don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and check out my Facebook page and post all your crochet items on there and check out all my other tutorials. And until next time, have a nice day.